Hello, it's Abbott Austin for another session of Talk Lexio. And in this uh, session of it, we'll do Lexio Divina on the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. This is the, the second reading in tomorrow, Sunday's Mass tomorrow. So uh, as always, we'll read it. Read it. First step of Lexio Divina is to read attentively with faith that this is God's word, then to meditate offer a prayer based on our meditation and then uh, contemplation as the final step. So we begin with prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, open our hearts and our minds to understand your scriptures, that we may know your will and have the joy of li living by it through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we're using St. Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. Uh, in particular, 1 through 5b. So it's um, uh, the, not the full uh, section of uh, verse 5 there. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, remembering you in our prayers, unceasingly calling to mind your work of faith and labor of love and endurance and hope, of our Lord Jesus Christ, before our God and Father, knowing, brothers and sisters, loved by God, how you were chosen. For our gospel did not come to you in word alone, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with much conviction. So again, I'll read the uh, passage over and uh, listen, with, listen with faith. This is God's word spoken to us. So listen and see what uh, catches your attention as you hear it. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the Church of the Thessalonians, and God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, remembering you in our prayers, unceasingly calling to mind your work of faith and labor of love and endurance and hope of our Lord Jesus Christ, before our God and Father, knowing, brothers and sisters, loved by God, how you were chosen. For our gospel did not come to you in word alone, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with much conviction. So uh, then we, after reading the passage multiple times, listening to what God is saying to us through this passage, uh, we start our meditation and we usually start with some uh, something about the text that catches our attention. So I'll offer a couple thoughts in that regard. One thing that's interesting is St. Paul speaks of the work of faith, the labor of love, and the endurance in hope. Okay, so we have uh, another instance in St. Paul's writings of faith, hope, and love, right? So uh, if you weren't aware, those th three theological virtues are especially uh, found in St. Paul's letter. So here there's an allusion to it. The work of faith, the labor of love, the endurance in hope. But I want to focus actually and spend a little more time on something that comes at the end of this passage. St. Paul ends by saying, For our gospel did not come to you in word alone, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with much conviction. Right. So uh, obviously the gospel is proclaimed in word, right, in speech. But St. Paul says it's not simply that. Um, also, the word for word is logos. So you could read, uh, you know, see this as uh, also saying not just in word or also not just in uh, kind of a rational account or argument, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with much conviction. It's not really explained what what this means, really, um, this power in the Holy Spirit with much conviction. So we're kind of left to think about what might this have looked like. Well, some of the early, uh, well, the apostles would sometimes when they preached, they would um, perform miracles as well. So that'd be a display of God's power. So maybe when it says, not just in word, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with much conviction, uh, perhaps it's referring to that. Maybe there are special signs that were done uh, when St. Paul proclaimed the gospel and that it's a manifestation of God's power. Perhaps, um, you know, even if we've never ourselves experienced a miracle, uh, sometimes we do have a uh, experience of God's power, though, in our lives. There's something happens where we 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 sense we have a certain uh, you know sense that this is God at work here. So it seems in some way that when Saint Paul came, proclaimed the gospel, 
Uh, there was some sense in which God manifested his power. He was at work. And so the people could see that God was at work here. And then that what that does, when you have some kind of case in, where you, know, you see God at work in your life or in, in something you notice, uh, then you have a sense that God is present. Right? And so then this uh, in the Holy Spirit, right? So when God's power is manifested in some way, we sense God's presence, the presence of the Holy Spirit. And what does this do to us uh, when this happens? Um, we get a certain confidence where we have certain assurance, right? God is here. God is present. He's at work. And so there comes this assurance or is the, the con translation here is conviction, right? Uh, the Greek word there can mean uh, assurance, um, kind of a confident assurance, right? So perhaps something like this is happening or St. Paul is referring to, right? Where there, what's going on is uh, there's some way in which God manifests his power. So God's at work, right? Perhaps something happened in a certain way and you realize, you know, God uh, in his providence and uh, special care for you brought something about, right? Um, whatever it might be, there's a sense which God is, uh, his power is active. And so then you have a sense of his presence and that leads to assurance. So perhaps think of that. Um, power, the manifestation of God's power, the presence of God, the Holy Spirit, and then the assurance that we get from that. Sometimes in our lives, uh, perhaps we've experienced that. And perhaps that's what St. Paul is referring to. That does uh, bolster our confidence in the proclamation of the gospel. If we're getting discouraged um, or we need a little help, sometimes that's what God does, right? He's, he does something in our lives, shows his power, we realize his presence, and then we are renewed in our assurance, our conviction, our confidence. So perhaps St. Paul is referring to that. And uh, perhaps we can relate to that in our own lives when we think about it. Okay, the third step is to offer a prayer. And so we offer a prayer simply based on our meditation. We want to ask God for something in this prayer. So I will offer a prayer, but I, I invite those who watch this to um, offer a prayer themselves based on their meditation. Almighty God, I ask that you increase my faith to strengthen it by the manifestation of your power and that, that I may know that you are present and be renewed in my assurance of your gospel. And I ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The final step then of Lexi Divina is contemplation. And the idea is that when you ask for something in prayer, your will lines up with God and you rest in God. You've, you've uh, come close to God because you are aligned with God, so to speak. And so what we want to do in contemplation is simply kind of rest in that petition, uh, having our will lined up with God's. So just pause for a few, few moments to uh, do that. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. I hope uh, this has helped you in uh, thinking about God's Word, His scripture, the Scriptures. And uh, please pray for us here at St. Procopius Abbey. Bye-bye.